two men embraced to the cheers of the crowd. And this is one of the things he said. One of the many things that the media got angry about back in April is that I would not let them tell me who my friends were. And because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a friend of mine, said Reverend Wright, added that during the controversy. The Fruit of Islam provided security for him and other Nation of Islam members stood in support of him. While they were using me as the whipping boy, they were waiting on him, Minister Farrakhan, to say anything, anything. He held his peace in order that Barack may be our president. My brother, we owe a debt of gratitude that we can never repay. And I just got to ask you questions about what do you think of Brother Re Reverend Jeremiah Wright? Well, you know, I, I like the piece where you talked about um, who picks your friends. Mm -hmm. I am able to drink from many wells. You don't ask other people from other cultures right. who's, <laughs> who's your leader and who's not your leader. Because in essence, my leader is Allah, period. Right. And we can stop there. Right. But I'm in an environment to where I have access to a lot of scholars and a lot of activists from all walks of life. When you bring up Minister Farrakhan, it brings up consternation because most people have not really been introduced right. to Minister Farrakhan. Absolutely. In the same way, many people who do not like black people have never really been introduced to black people. Right. They don't know the hopes, the aspirations. They don't know the story. They don't know that they are standing mm -hmm. on the struggle and the tears and the blood of a people who've laid the foundation. Right. You're looking at someone going into the White House that his ancestors built. Right. Via slave labor. <laughs> right. Where did you read that right. in the history books? So when you ask me how do I feel about Reverend Jeremiah Wright, I'm not very familiar with Reverend Jeremiah Wright. However, I know what a black theological teaching is. Go ahead. And so what he is saying from what I have heard and from what I have studied is that the slave had a different theology than right. the master. Sure, indeed. It makes sense to me because different people from different walks of life have different needs. And that's why when you go into a so-called white church, mm -hmm. you notice the difference. Right. When you go into a black church, you notice the difference. When you go into various places where people are worshiping and you're from a different culture, you notice the difference. Right. And so Reverend Jeremiah Wright is talking to a people and a tradition from a viewpoint that he knows and he understands. Right. And so for him to talk to those people, they get it because they understand it's like soul music. Mm -hmm. You know when somebody is right. doing soul music because it goes down into you right. if you understand it deeper than just the words. And so if you're not a part of that culture, it might sound harsh, it might sound abrasive, it might sound crazy right. because you are coming from a different point of view. So do I appreciate a black libera liberation theology, if that's what you want to coin it, mm -hmm. because that's kind of like saying black Muslims. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew there were any Muslims other than righteous. I don't even know right. what a black Muslim is. Right. But anyway, do I understand where <laughs> Reverend Jeremiah Wright is coming from? Yes. Do I understand where Minister Farrakhan is coming from? Yes. Right. Do I understand where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was coming from? Yes. Do I know where Dr. Leonard Jeffries was coming from? Yes. Did I hear and talk to and learn from Dr. Ha uh, or Haki Matabuti? Yes. Do I understand uh, Maulana Karinga? Yes. Do I understand Sonia Sanchez and right. what she was saying in her poetry in the black arts movement right. where they were speaking through uh, the words of Malcolm and others and um, Gwendolyn Brooks and, right. and John Coltrane. Do I know what John Coltrane was talking about when he was saying a love supreme, right. a law supreme? Right. Do I understand what John <laughs> Coltrane is talking about? Come on.
love. Yes, I do when he's talking about love because these people are talking about love to me because love is the only force in the universe as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So do I understand it from my cultural tradition? Do I understand it from um, Charles, who's 81 years old, who came in the cultural center yesterday, who is incredibly touched by the election of Barack Obama mm -hmm. after picking cotton. Right. And, 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 and right. sharing with me um, right. and clarifying to me when I would show young people, I would say, here's a piece of cotton. Mm -hmm. How much does it weigh? And saying, Charles, did our people really pick over 100 pounds of cotton in one day? Mm. And he could say, Brother Jeff, my brother and my uncle could pick 160 pounds mm. of cotton in one day. I couldn't pick 100 pounds of cotton in a day. And my, grand and my mother would chastise me because she thought that I was slacking off. Mm. But I just couldn't do it because when I picked the cotton, I would cut my fingers right. because it would be like um, going across razor blades. Mm. So can I talk with a brother in the cultural center about picking cotton and the difference between picking cotton and chopping cotton? Mm. So when these individuals articulate the hopes and the aspirations of a people who have been subjected and abused, I understand that. Right. But the truth hurts. Right. And I don't think that all of our ancestors were so-called erudite academic scholars, but mm -hmm. they were very wise. Right. Someone told me, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. <laughs> to me, that's a black liberation theology. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Absolutely. I, it, I, you know, I understand exactly where you're coming from because, you know, we came up under a black liberation theology. I know I did. And, that, and that's one of the things that appeal. Now, before we um, get out of here, I want to touch on uh, just a few of the things that you're doing in the community, because um, for those of us who don't know, and I talked about that Brother Jeff has a uh, community health initiative where he deals with um, HIV and other ailments that affect the community on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have to say, Brother Jeff is one of the most active brothers um, in the community, and for that, I always admire Brother for that. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your um, involvement with the initiative? You know, when we created the uh, Cultural Center in Five Points, uh, Brother Jeff's Cultural Center is located at 2836 Welton Street in historic Five Points in Northeast Denver a community that has a rich tradition and a legacy of excellence. Right. Whether you talk about the arts like we did in terms of uh, Duke Ellington and Sarah Vaughn and Miles right. Davis and um, Charlie Burrell in our community, um, just so many individuals. A flourishing community that was full of business ownership. Right. I mean, my key is there business is. ownership. I'm not saying business management, I'm saying business ownership. Um, in excellence, um, all of a sudden when we came along, the Five Points was no longer in that condition. Mm -hmm. It had been struggling for a long time and was basically on life support. It's on life support before the infusion of gangs, drugs, and violence. Mm -hmm. um, that's what became the, um, the new economy in our communities across the nation. It was the drug trade. But Anyway, with that being said, we created the cultural center out of that environment in terms of the killings that were taking place. Mm -hmm. You can remember we were going to funerals almost every right. week. Reverend Leon Kelly and, and, and um, Terrence Roberts, Roberts, who are working with gangs today, you know, they have a running total of over 900 people who have been killed in our community and on right. the west side. These are largely right. black and brown um, murders. Right. Well, at the same time that was taking place and we were doing all that activism around those issues, there's another issue that was silently killing our community. Right. It's called HIV and ultimately AIDS. Uh, the distinction is HIV is the virus that leads to AIDS. Right. And people don't die of AIDS, they die of the complications of, an, of a compromised immune system. Right. In other words, you can't fight off the flu. You can't fight the pneumonia. You can't fight the opportunistic infections that mm -hmm. are, are penetrating your system. 
well, Brother Herman, I never heard the rally or I 